Oh, I'll double hook up. Yeah, right. Now we're in a Barney. Now we're in a proper Barney. We've got two on here, guys. G'day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Sammy Hitsky fishing adventure. You're joining me out for a troll today. I've got some big dead baits rigged. I've got them out the back on the rods already with the hope of connecting myself to a large autumn Spanish mackerel. I haven't chased them this autumn yet, so fingers crossed we can find a couple to show you. Now, that's not all we're gonna be doing today. I get a stack of questions about how I store my fish on the boat and how I process them once I get home. So today we're going to be going through the whole process from start to finish. From catching your fish and storing it on the boat, to then taking it home, filleting it, and then processing and freezing it so it can be enjoyed for months to come. First step though, we've got to get a fish. So fingers crossed one of these rods screams off very, very soon. But before we do that, let's quickly take a look at the baits I rigged up to see what we're trolling around. Now that is a Spanish bait. Had to modify a few rigs up to make sure it fit, but see how we go. Never rigged a schoolie before, so all new to me. Well, there you go, guys. School mackerel. This is my first time trolling, trolling them. They look good. Apparently, big mackerel love them. Hopefully, we can find out today. This guy has already been hit by something. He's got a bit of a tear in his skin, so I don't want to flex him too much because it'll blow out, but let's get him in the water and see how long he lasts. Hopefully it swims. That swims like a champion. That's got big mackerel written all over it. This is bait number two, Benito. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. And the short bait is this guy here. The chopper tailor. Yum, 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 yum. Swim, my precious. Yeah, he's going well. He'll hunt. Well, guys, the mackerel trap is set. Got three different baits out on three different rods. Long rod, short rod, and uh, medium rod. And fingers crossed one of these reels springs to life sooner rather than later. I really love to see a nice big starter winter, an autumn Spanish. I haven't caught one yet, so would love for today to be the day. Fish on. Fish on. All right, here we go. Here we go. That was a good hit. Oh, I'll double hook up. Yeah, right. Now we're in a Barney. Now we're in a proper Barney. We've got two on here, guys. We have two on. Right. Oh, is this one off? Oh, I think we've lost one. Oh, that's a bugger. That guy was gassing it too. Well, I've often wondered what would happen 
if you get two. And we just about found out then. It's kind of half hoping I'll have a shot at landing too. That other one hit the school mackerel. Might have been a better, bit of a better fish. Should be getting a look at this guy very shortly. Massive shout out to Dicko for uh, the lend of the rods too. You might have seen I'm using some different rods. These are custom built eight foot trolling rods so they spread your, your baits out a heap more. Please don't run under the boat. We don't want that. He's having a go now. What we don't want is him getting sharked. He's not far away in now. Oh, he's only just hooked. I want back the, uh, not that much. Come on, fella. I think he's only got one hook in the top of his head. So I don't want to go too hard on him. Pop that one out. Come on. Up you come. There he goes. What a bugger. Should have gone lighter. Ah, zero from two. That sucks. Oh, that sucks, 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 sucks. Whew, bugger. Oh, well. I think he just had, I saw him, he just had that treble in the top of his head. I should have just gone lighter, but then I also wasn't going to get him up. That's the excuse I'm going to keep telling myself anyway. Um, yeah. Bugger. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, no. Popped me wind on. Oh, no, it's pulled the mono out from the wind on. Awesome. That's one good way to lose them. Oh, that sucks. That really sucks. All right. Let's uh, see how we go this time. Please stay in, hooks. Please stay in. Ooh. This is a nice fish. Ah, 
I'd only just put this other rod out too. I'm a bit worried. A bit worried there's gonna be a tangle along the lines here somewhere. Usually a fight these guys with the boat in gear, but this guy doesn't seem to be getting any closer. So I've just knocked it out. See if we can get a bit closer to him. Just gotta be weary that that other boat bait is now close by. Ratchet. Still running. I think it's a quite a nice fish. I can see the mono there. If you good wants to get that back on, we know he's not too far away. Maybe I can't see the mono. There's the mono. He's not too far away now. Oh, he's a nice fish. He is a nice, nice mackerel. That's a nice one. Oh, potentially very nice. Just gonna back the drag off a touch. Should have done it last time, but yeah, he's a really nice mackerel. He's a really nice mackerel. Get that head down, please, Mr. Mac. That is a really, really nice mackerel. Woo! This is a two-hand job. Woo! Have a go at this guy. Oh my goodness. Wow! That guy is an absolute tank. Have a go at that. Woo! That is a huge mackerel. Look at the girth on it. It's not that long, but it is super, super fat. Wow, we. Wow, 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 we. Oh, fish on. Well, it is all happening here. This was just in the. This one, bait was just in the holder, just out the back. Look what happened. It just got belted. Would have been 10 meters out the back there. If had been in gear, I might have hooked him. Now the bite is going off. I need to get another bait back down. Righto, let's get the business on this guy. He is an absolute weapon of a mackerel. And he wasn't going anywhere by the looks. He's got hooks in him galore. One. He had four hooks in him. Oh, 
And that's why D hookers are good. You don't want your hands anywhere near this guy. Righto. So we're just killing this fish. We'll give him a quick hold up, and then we're gonna bleed him and get him straight on ice. That is an absolute belter. Oh, that's a that might be over 20 kilos, you know. Oh, that'll be very close to being over 20 kilos. Wowee. That's what he looks like. Oh my goodness. That's a heavy, heavy fish. That's him. What an absolute weapon of a mackerel. That thing is huge. Woo! What an absolute tank. That thing will be 25 kilos. For sure, it is a big, big fish. Woohoo! That's the one we're chasing. Uh, rah! Uh, all right. What a belter! What a belter! All right, guys. That fish is dead. Now we've got to make sure he bleeds properly to preserve the flesh. So I'm just cutting in behind his gills. That's where all the major stuff is. So get in there, make your cuts. You see that blood pouring out already. Probably should have done this on the other side. Just do the other side as well. This is a pretty thick fish, the knife won't reach all the way through. Righto, we're just going to let this guy chill here and bleed out. So he doesn't fill the esky up with blood. Try to grab a couple more baits. Mr. Taylor. Mr. Bonito. Rightio, let's get this guy on the ice. Um, well, yeah. This is meant to be a really seamless, seamless exercise, but fish this size make it very difficult, actually. Now, one thing I get asked about a lot is the fish bag I'm currently using. It's this one here. It is a Icy Tech HD bag. Uh, HD meaning heavy duty. It's got thicker insulation than the other ones. Uh, I'm running the two kilo gel packs down the bottom. Then I chuck bag ice on the top or wet ice, and then that's dry colds. There we go. Oh, just. You ripper. So you got the gel pack down the bottom. Wet ice on top. Oh, I don't even know if that's going to close. the mission well I've got one bait back out we've just lost the Sun so I don't know how much longer I'll get mackerel don't usually uh, go too hard after dark so fingers crossed I can get one more hit that's one fish landed from four hits it's been a pretty good arvo I think an extra set of hands would have come really in handy today but what can you do uh, 
I'll show you a bit in a sec too. I just about cut my toe off with that spano. I um, was moving it and I felt it touch my toe. And I was like, oh yeah, thought nothing off it. And I uh, just checked then and I've cut through my shoe into my toe. So I'll show you that in a sec. But let's see if we can get another one before we lose this lot. So this is what we're currently dealing with in the toe department. It's um, cut from about here and down the side. So I think it's just a big flap at this stage. I can't really tell. I'll, um, nothing's hanging off or hanging out. So at this stage, I think we'll, we'll survive. Lesson learned, mackerel are sharp. Whoops, the daisies. Okay guys, welcome to the next day. No more hits for the afternoon and as you can imagine, it was well and truly dark by the time I got home. So I've left the fielding till about, it's about two o'clock in the afternoon the following day. Now I'm gonna show you how I stored that fish overnight, but first let's have a look at my toe. Turns out I dodged a serious bullet. Check this out. Just goes to show, gotta be careful. Even if they're dead, they can still get you. It's cut me from there to there and I'm not really sure how deep it is but it got me a good one. Very lucky it didn't hit me here. That would have been bad, bad news. You can also probably tell by the tone of my voice, I managed to contract the sniffles, but uh, oh, I wanted to call it the Spanish flu, but then it's not a laughing matter, that one. That was a bit of a serious ordeal. So it's not the Spanish flu, it's just the sniffles. And before any of you smart ass landscapers comment, my lawn is perfectly mowed. It's absolutely schmicko, but I'm using a filter on these videos to make it look like it's long. Uh, yeah, sounds about right. Righto, let's check out this fish. So here's a bit better of a look of my fish bag. That's the 1.5 Icy Tech HD. Now that's. The fish has been in here overnight, and that's the original ice I had from the start of the day. Only thing I've done is I've swapped out the bottom gel packs for freshly frozen ones, and I've added two extra. Oh, there you go, that gives you some indication of how cold it is. That's the water at the bottom of the bag is actually frozen. So this fish, even to touch, is very, very cold. That's, that's what you want. You want it to be as cold as possible, bar of being frozen I don't think you could keep a fish too cold anyways let's get this big girl out and uh, see how much she weighs now I know I said yesterday that it had to be 25 kilos and I'm looking at it now it's still a big fish but I don't think it's gonna go 25 I think it's gonna be closer to the 20 kilo uh, end of the scale but uh, let's pop it on the scales and have a look I've got to make sure it doesn't come off and bite me again <laughs> Still a big fish. Oh, I don't know if you can see that, but that's off the ground. Let's have a look. Twenty-two point three two. So I was right. It was big. Just missing an extra three kilos that I uh, predicted, but that is a crack and mackerel by any standards. That is a belter. So 22.3 kilos and about 1.4, just over 1.4 meters long. So that is a serious mackerel. And by the looks of things, it's a typical winter build, really deep in the body, um, small head, just really fat fish. And I'm hoping the meat is gonna be nice and fatty as well. Some mackerel, the meat is almost greasy. There's that much fat in it and they are superb eating. Now, believe it or not, I'm sure it's not that hard to believe, actually. These things are pretty hard to fill at this size by yourself. I was really hoping for some small little size school fish like I had on that first run, because um, they're a lot easier to de demonstrate the whole filleting process. This guy's gonna be a bit of a struggle, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. Um, there's plenty of different ways to do this. This is the way I do it. Um, yeah, you just take it nice and slow and try not to waste any meat. The main thing is, is just getting that meat off and keeping it as cold as possible throughout the whole process. You don't want it to heat up and then cool it back down. You want to cut it while it's cold. And as soon as you got, say, a container full, get that into the fridge while you're cutting out, out the rest. Right, so I'm going to try and work the fillets off. Uh, I'm going to cut one side, then I'm going to flip it and then cut the other side, then pull, pull them off. I'm going to use this knife here. It's nice and thick. Uh, I reckon it's easier to run along the backbone rather than the smaller knives that catch edges and um, they seem to go up and down. These ones you just kind of run along 
and then I'll change to this one when I need to do intricate stuff like over the spine. Another way you can fillet mackerel is big cutlets, but as you can see, a fish of this size, um, once you get to here, your cutlet's gonna be a massive big T-bone essentially. So I'm gonna go for fillets um, and yeah, see how we go. Wish me luck. Yes. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. That is grease or fat. This is a big fatty winter mackerel. Just what I was hoping for. These ones are fantastic eating. Now we work the fillet off from this side. This is where it gets hard to do with one person because you really need someone to hold the, um, the fish and hold the fillet for you because it's quite large, but see how we go. There's one fillet done. See here. I missed a bit of meat here where I couldn't kind of lift it with one hand and cut, but that doesn't mean it's wasted. Just grab your knife. Beautiful. Now with a big fish like this, you're better off leaving that other side on and dealing with this one, getting that cold. This uses the whole mass of the fish to keep the other side cool. You know, no point having two fillets out here getting hot when one can stay relatively cool and that one can be processed and put in the fridge straight away. Another thing worth mentioning as well is at no time have I put fresh water on the flesh of the meat. It's okay to wash the outside of the fish with a skin protects it, but never put fresh water on your meat. Some people like to dip their fillets in a salt water brine. Um, personally, I don't. I don't let it touch water at all once it's filleted. I just like to go from here straight into the container then into the fridge. Less water contact, the better in my opinion. Also, where possible, I like to leave the skin on. Not only is it good for you, but it also helps keep moisture in the fillet while you're cooking. Now, even if you're not gonna eat it at the end of the day, cook it with the skin on and your fillets won't dry out as much. One container done. Now chuck these straight in the fridge so they stay cool. Now for this second side, just want to repeat what you did on the first side essentially. I'm not going to make you watch through that, but uh, we'll get it off and then we'll uh, chat then. And that's fillet number two. You can see how clean and white the flesh is. It's because we've looked after it correctly, we've bled it, we've kept it iced down, we've taken all the right steps, and this meat is going to be in tip top eating condition. Okay guys, those containers of fish have been back in the fridge for another couple of hours now, so that fish is nice and cold. It never heated up, which is exactly what you want. Now it's time to pack it away. Now in my opinion, the best way to store fish for a long period of time is in a cryovac bag in the freezer. Some people may disagree, but I don't think you can go past cryovacing your fish and then chuck it in the deep freeze. It literally lasts for months. The best part is, it's a very simple process as well. So take this opportunity to trim up your fillets too. Any bits that you don't want on there, you can take them off now. Uh, a lot of people cut the bloodline and stuff out. In this time, that's the time to do it. Uh, I think mine are pretty good. What do I do though, is I lay them on some paper towel. Now the point of the paper towel is to remove any remaining moisture on the skin or the fillet. The more moisture we can get rid of now, the better they're gonna freeze down. And it doesn't hurt to give them a pat down on top too. So anything you see there, you wanna get rid of any moisture. Dab it all off. Now of course you're going to need cryovac bags. Mine are 40 centimetres by 28. I found that's just a good all round size to do whole fish fillets as well as the smaller ones as well. They all fit in there. You can even fit nice sized baits in there. You want to quickly label it with the, uh, the date and the species. 
Having a label on it cuts out all the guesswork. Now when it comes to packing, I like to do mine in feed size packs. So enough for dinner and then lunch the next day. Make sure you use pieces that are similar size and thickness so you can fit them in like a jigsaw puzzle and have the minimum amount of air gaps. Pro tip. When you're packing, go skin to skin and flesh to flesh. Now when it comes to cryovac machines, you don't need to spend a heap of money. I bought this one for 50 bucks about 10 years ago. It's done thousands of packets of fish and still going strong. Just something that sucks the air out and seals the bag well will be perfectly fine. Right guys, that one is ready for the freezer. All you gotta do now is just pack them nice and flat so you don't bruise the flesh or pierce your bag. And that will literally be there in prime eating condition anytime you get the hangering for some mackerel or whatever fish you decided to pack up. And that'll be ready to go six months from now. I guess the real moral of the story is just to look after your fish the best you can and that way you'll get the most out of it. If you put all the effort in to go catch it, you may as well go the extra yard to make sure you're eating the best possible product. Anyways guys, I'm gonna get stuck into the rest of this fish and I'll chat to you straight after. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in this week's episode. Sorry guys, I will be covering all the rigs and tackle I use for the fishing in an upcoming video. But if you can't wait that long, just drop us a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you'd like any more information about the Icy Tech range of soft fish bags or gel packs, you can check out all that and plenty more on their website, icytech.com.au. If you'd like to support this channel, head over to our website, sammyhitskyfishing.com. Plenty of merch available there. If you found this video useful, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I'll catch you next week for another Sammy Hitsky Fishing adventure. Cheers.